Hello, hello. Welcome to episode 16. If my math is right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Like I'm doing math for this. No, I'm not doing math. Uh, I just talked for two minutes. Uh, I thought I had pressed record by accident. So then I gave this speech about, oh, I wasn't ready, but I pressed the button, so I guess I'm going to go. And then I realized the light wasn't on after I talked for two minutes. And so let me just explain what I was talking about to no one. I, when I got in my car, there was a song playing, and that song reminded me of playing mini golf a long, long time ago. And I was just thinking about miniature golf, miniaturized golf. I used to go there with my... We Okay, back up. My town used to have a mini golf out by the highway and it was really dinky they had mini golf they had go-karts and they had a driving range and you, oh and a bedding cages maybe too and uh you, i'd go there with friends or uh, for birthday parties or whatever and it was so much fun and it, it was kind of dinky like i said it, it wasn't the, the most beautiful place it wasn't run i, I don't know it was kind of gross, you know, and they had food and stuff, but it was like kind of gross. But at the same time, you just loved it. You grew up with it and it was a special place. You could go and have a good time. And I always loved the something about the design of it, something about the design of mini golf, something from my the the, 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 the like I remember when I was talking about how I froze Boba Fett in water and I was playing outside and I used that or I would I would play play near a bush and that, that would be the woods for my action figures that kind of thing or i would use like a little puddle would be a huge lake or and there would be a monster in it or something you know imagination using real things i don't know what you call that or what this idea even is that i'm poking at but there was something about like when there was a water a water hazard and you had to hit your ball over the water and it, it, it was just like a fun... What is that? What am I trying to get at here? There was something about that. It it gave it a certain a something, a flavor. I don't know. But I love that. Or I love, I love like when there's a windmill and you have to shoot through the windmill. And if you don't nail it right, because the windmill is turning and it could block your ball. Or it has to actually... Like, like you have to go over a ramp. And it has to actually go over the ramp and fall into the right hole. There's just something about it. I love it. It's cleverly designed and it's fun. You have to change your way of thinking to make it clever and fun. And I like that a lot. And uh, I used to, I remember, we, my dad would take me to the driving range sometimes. This happened a few times. We would go to Wendy's, get a couple of burgers, sodas and stuff. And we'd go out to the driving range and just whack balls. <laughs> <laughs> We would. We would go out there and uh, just eat a bunch of burgers. They never tasted better. I remember the sun going down and just hitting balls and just talking to my dad about whatever. I don't even remember what we talked about, but it was one of my favorite dad memories. I should ask him about that, see if he remembers anything. I bet he remembers some fun stories. I should interview my dad for this. Would that be weird if I interviewed my dad? Hmm. I'll think about it. Uh, so... That was always amazing. I love that. It, it was very special to me. And then there was also... Is it raining? Is it seriously raining? How is this? It wasn't supposed to rain. It's too cold to rain. It, it might be ice. Something's happening on my windshield. Mmm. Weird. Anyway, I there was also go-karts, which I didn't do. They scared me. Those kind of things always scared me. I didn't. I had never driven. Obviously, I was too young to actually drive, and being in control of that thing legitimately bothered me. My friends all had—not all of them, but a lot of them—had like, "Oh, come over and we'll ride the four wheeler," or "Oh, come, come ride my moped." I was terrified. To this day, I would be not. I don't know. I don't know how to handle one of those. And I remember one time my uncle was like, "Get on the moped and ride around the yard." And it, at first, I was going real slow, and then I got the hang of it, and it was fine. But they're loud, and they I just didn't know what I was doing. And I bumped one time. I bumped into the – they had these big tires, and if you bumped into it, you just you know, you would slam forward, and then everyone would just pass you and make fun of you. And I, I was terrified that I was going to either wreck or be bad at it, and then people would make fun of me, which I, I don't know. 
I was never bullied, but I had this really f- this fear of being made fun of because I guess I was sensitive as a child. I don't know. I don't know. I would take it personally though, and I would I didn't know how to respond. <laughs> I would just it would just upset me. So yeah, that that scared me. But I did do it a few times. There was this. Uh, it's weird the the whole you must be this tall to ride the go karts thing. I was a tall kid, so I could ride them at a younger age than a lot of people. I think. But the the thing you had to stand up against was the Mad Magazine guy. What's his name? What's that character's name? The Mad Magazine. You know, the, the face. You know, the guy with the red hair and the big teeth or whatever. <coughs> or brown hair. Whatever his hair is. He's freckly and he's got the big teeth. It was him in, like, a NASCAR driver uniform. But why was it his face? Like, were the people just big fans of Mad Magazine? Or was there is there some other, like, cultural thing I don't know about? I should look into that. I don't know. But that, yeah, so I did do that a few times, and it was fun. Uh, I love that place, and then it shut down. I, I had been told there was another one a few towns away, and I never went. And there is one about an hour from me that you can go to. It's right off the highway. It's been the same since I was a kid. It's like an action park. They also have a water park there. And it's fine. It's a little overpriced, and they've like literally never changed it that I know of. And they have a crappy little arcade, but nothing good. No pinball or anything. Uh, it's a fun place to go if you've never been. I'll, I'll never say no to an afternoon of mini golf and some fun fair food. You know, that kind of food, you know, like a kind of a crappy burger and fries and a soda, but you've been outside all day and it just tastes great, even though it's maybe not the best. It just tastes great. Uh, th- th- so we lost that in my town, but we've also got, we've got a great bowling alley. It's a wonderful, it, they redesigned it, and it's really nice. Uh, the only problem is there's no bowling allowed. Uh, I just, every time I've walked in there, they've been like, leagues only, sorry. Oh, sorry, no bowling tonight. What are you doing? What do you mean no bowling? It's a bowling alley. Even if you're doing leagues, you don't have, what, what night can I come in then? It's not posted on the door. The door said it open bowl today. Oh, sorry, leagues tonight. No open lanes. And you go there and there's no one bowling. There's nothing happening. And there's people working it. Maybe there's some, maybe they, like, oh, we don't have our technician. If something goes wrong, I won't be able to take care of it. Something along those lines, maybe. I don't know. But it it doesn't make any sense to me. And so we started going bowling at a nearby, we would drive to a different town, even though we've got a really nice bowling alley in our town. No bowling. I mean, seriously, we went in there several times. No bowling. I've called. No bowling. Sorry. They used to have arcade machines, too. I played my first Tekken 3 machine in there. And I beat arcade mode. I was very proud of myself. Uh, but no. No bowling. Forget it. You want to bowl? You go You go out of town. I would rather go to a not-as-good bowling alley and uh, be treated better. So yeah, and they were like super rude, like a guy yelled at me, like I'm supposed to know, it's a public place, it's a bowling alley, don't yell at me, come on, I don't know, Jerko, you can go to the bar there, the bar is always open, but no effing bowling, no way, get out of here. The, uh, the times I did get to bowl there, I remember having really good times, hanging out with old friends. It was a thing you would do for somebody's birthday party or just a get together, family thing sometimes. But no, not anymore. Forget it. What other stuff is there? There's no, there's not really anything else in my town. I, I live in a very small town uh, in the middle of nowhere. There's lots of cornfields if you like those. It's very flat. There's nothing to look at. Uh, there's really, there's nothing to see. There's nothing to talk about. We have a ton of fast food if you like fast food. That's only goes so far, though, you know? Yeah, my, my town is lame. I, there's nothing going on. That's why I do all these... I have all these other creative... Like, it's the only way I can not go crazy. I don't go out, though. That's the thing. There's nowhere to go. So I don't go out. There's nowhere I go... I don't go to bars. That's not my thing. I've always had weird experiences in bars. Never been a fan. Now, if there was some kind of club that was more for my kind of a person, like if there was a barcade... That'd be a different story. I would love a barcade. Nearest barcade for me is an hour away. 
not going to a barcade, getting trashed, then trying to drive home. Um, yeah, there's nothing in my town. There's just nothing. There's plenty of bars, but I just, they're not my kind of environment. Generally, my, my people aren't at the bar. Now, whatever, if you go to a bar, that's fine. Maybe your bar is cool. These are not. I've never had a good time. We went there on my 21st birthday. We went to one of the bars in town. Um, and I was more interested in playing songs on the jukebox than drinking. I'd been drinking long before 21, unfortunately. So it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't like, my first drink! I was not that super pumped about it, because I it was not new for me. But I guess I could do it in public now. <laughs> but now that I can, I don't. Uh, I always joke and I go, like when I go to a nice restaurant, oh, I'm going to get, I'm going to get a beer and I never get one because I'll be too full. If I get a beer with dinner, I always see people like guys with their families and like they, they have a couple beers or something. I, I, first of all, I can't, I can barely drink in public. I just feel like a fool. But I, if I got a beer with my dinner, I can't even have soda with my food generally. I get too full and then I, I have all this extra food. I would rather fill up on the food that hopefully is great. I can have a beer at home later. I enjoy a beer more, you know, in the evening. I'm not a daytime drinker at all. I like to drink. I generally don't drink before 8 or 9 p.m. I'll look at the clock and go, 7? Too early. I don't know what it is. Even if I'm totally able to and there's nothing in the way. And we're sitting down and I've already had dinner and I'm, like, ready for it. I just, there's something about, I, I just drinking happens later. I don't know what it is. Uh, what kind of drinks do I like? Have I ever talked about this kind of stuff? I like beer. I like a lot of kinds of beers. Um, I'm, I wouldn't say that I'm super picky, but there are some I don't like. I'm not a big fan of Heineken, for example. It's okay. It's just not for me. I like, uh, I like your normal beers. I started off with things like Budweiser and Coors and like the basic ones, sure. And those are all fine. I don't have anything against those. I'm not a fan of Keystone or like Maddie. Those are those are not my favorite. But I do love PBR. I will fully admit it. I love PBR, <laughs> and I love Stag. Those are my go-to. If I just want a cheap beer, sometimes you just crave one. Sometimes you'll just want one. Sometimes I'll just we're watching a movie. Hey, you know what sounds good? I don't want a snack. I just want a beer. Just one beer. And a lot of times, that's where it ends. I'll just drink one. Uh, I, I don't know. Those are my cheapy go-tos. But if I'm if I'm going something more expensive, I love Killian's Irish Red. Those are good. Uh, I love uh, Blue Moon. Oh, Blue Moon is a treat. Big fan of Blue Moon. Those kinds of things. Um, there's all kinds of beers I like, though. I like some of those honey wheats, and I like some of the flavored fruity ones. I, I, I do like, there's a lot that I like. I like more of them that I've tried than don't like. Does that make sense? I also like some liquor. I'm not going to lie to you. I'll drink a vodka or a rum, a whiskey. I've really, or, or bourbon. I've been into those. I've never really had whiskey for real until recently. I mean, I tried it. But I didn't really have any feelings about it one, one way or the other. I would always just go, eh, vodka's cheap, and do that. Although I've started to discern quality. You, you can Sometimes you can really tell that vodka is absolute poison. <laughs> that is terrible stuff. Uh, I also don't like tequila at all. Like I know at least one of you is not a tequila fan. <laughs> I'm sorry to bring it up. Uh, yeah, I think my go-to is either like a rum or a vodka, like traditionally, but I've really been into whiskey lately. Anybody have any recommendations on beers to try or, or different drinks? I would love to try. I like mixed drinks. I like this, I like fruity stuff. I like, I like stuff that's just stout. I like all that. I love, uh, I'll have a Guinness. Very down for a Guinness. Yeah, uh, I didn't mean to turn, turn this into booze talk. But uh, I know some people enjoy a nice adult beverage from time to time. And I'm one of those people. I used to get just hammered. I used to get so drunk and get sick and stuff. But that didn't last me long. You can't sustain that. And the people that do, I, <laughs> my hat is off to you. 
I haven't been legitimately drunk in a while. Uh, that's partly because I can't burp or vomit due to a surgery that I had. So getting dangerously drunk like that is just a bad idea for me. As you can tell, that would just be a dumb thing for me to do. Put myself in that situation. So I have to be careful, but I don't want to be that careful. Uh, one of my favorite things to do, if we don't have a movie to watch or a TV show to watch, or if we're not streaming, if that ever happens again, fingers crossed, is to have a drink and go on to YouTube and, and, and look up music videos. I love music videos. I don't know if I've talked about them on this show or not, but music videos are very important to me. Like, very honestly, very important to me. There's something about a, a music video that I, I connect more with the song sometimes, sometimes less. Sometimes I'll see the video and go, oh, that's not, I don't get that. Why does that go with that song? But sometimes music videos are as important to me as movies or comics or, or like other, other media that I just love. That's very important to me. Uh, certain videos have always stuck out to me. Uh, I love Weird Al and I love his music videos. They're fantastic. They're just as funny as the songs and they'll sometimes massively improve a song, I think. Especially some of his more recent ones. Well, all of them. But some of his more recent songs I was at first indifferent about. I liked them, but I was le I was not going to go back and listen right away. I thought, oh, that's funny. That's yeah, a funny joke that he made. But with the visual and the storytelling in the videos, big difference. Makes a world of difference in my opinion. I like everything Weird Al's ever done, but those those newer ones, I think, maybe it was because they were new. It's probably that. Uh, it's just that whole, like, you get a band that has a new album, and you're not sure if you're going to like it, and maybe at first you feel like you don't like it, because it's different for some reason. It's not what you expected. That's the thing I always run into. This game, this movie, this album, it wasn't what I expected, and therefore I didn't enjoy it as much. Sometimes it's way better to have no expectations. Don't hype yourself up. Don't have any expectations. Just go into it and let it let it be the thing that it is. That's so hard to do, isn't it? It's so hard to do. Like with the new Star Wars movie. It's so hard to just let it let it be what it is and then make your decisions. I had all these, oh, like, oh, I, I, this is my theory on Snoke. And, oh, I think, I think Ray is blank's uh, relation or blah, blah, blah. Get rid of it. Get it all out of your head. It's so hard to do that. And, and sometimes the movies will play with those expectations, like Star Wars. I think they took great steps in the new one to sort of throw you off and go, Whoa, which almost feels like I'm being punished for being a fan. So I have some concerns with the new Star Wars movie, but all in all, I do like it. Don't get me wrong. Water time. But music videos, right? Super important to me. I used to just watch MTV and VH1 all day. Also, Much Music and Fuse. There were other channels. I think that that channel became itself. That channel was was Fuse and turned into Much Music or the other way around. And I would sit and watch music videos literally for eight hours. during Like during the summer, friend couldn't come over that day or whatever. If I'm on my own, turn a music video on, play Game Boy. Honestly, I would just sit in front of that TV and just absorb those things. And they they tell stories and they, they have cool images or weird images and they make you think. Sometimes they'll give the song a whole new meaning, like I said before. I love them. And uh, I, I try to... Like one time recently somebody said, why do you care about music videos? I was talking to somebody and going, oh, remember the video for that? And they're like, I don't watch music videos. Why? What year is it? 2018. Why would I care about music videos? And I honestly didn't know what to say. I just, I, I don't know. Do you know? I, I don't know. What? What? They're super, they're super good. They're, you could get invested. It's like, if it's only a four minute song, you haven't lost that much if the video sucked. That's, that's another reason. That's another thing. Like, turn them on and, hey, if you don't like this one, guess what? It'll be over in two minutes. Don't worry about it. And I would often get turned on to new music that way. Or remember on the, uh, I don't have TV anymore. I don't have cable or anything. But at my parents' house, when I lived with them, they would have, like, the you know, the awesome cable package. And then you'd go up into the crazy, like, the 700s or whatever. And the channel would be, like, oh, all metal. It would be, like, premium music 
stations, like radio, but through your TV. And I would just turn that on sometimes and get new bands. I found the band In Flames that way and also Typo Negative that way. Uh, uh, Typo Negative has been, I've featured them on this show on a, a thing I, I don't do, which is a feature. I don't have any features on this show. But if I did have a song of the day for today. DK Song of the Day, sponsored by Dr. Thunder. <laughs> uh, it would be this song by the band Catatonia. And the song, I believe, is called Residual. And I had to think about, have I put this song on before? Have I had this as a song of the day? Because it's one of my favorite songs in a long time, of the past five years. I find myself, if I, if I have this album on, I, I generally, before I'm done, will make sure that I hear this song. It's called Residual. And it is going to fall more in line with, like, the Porcupine Tree or something like that it's like mix the porcupine tree and the devon townsend maybe maybe i don't know maybe not that might be way wrong but it's um it's it's heavy but there's no screaming whatsoever it's all very good singing and uh great lyrics they're swedish uh shout out to nostrika uh these guys are a bunch of cuties i saw them live they're incredible they're they're probably my favorite I would consider them to be a rock band, I guess. They're definitely my favorite rock band. If we're just like the, I don't know why they're not on the radio. If radio music was like Catatonia, I'd be all over the radio all the time. Uh, if you if you try to find that song, here's what here's what it sounds like. Let's see here. There's a couple parts to listen for. This is the beginning. Yeah, there you go. It's very solemn and uh, whatever. There's a couple parts that are just beautiful. I love his voice. The drums are especially good. He's very meticulous and uh, he really changes it up. There's some great fills if you're into drums. Um, there's a little bit of a tool vibe in this song for me, especially in one part, and I'll get to it. I'm a huge fan of the band Tool, or at least I was. 10 years ago when they put out their last record. Who knows if their new stuff's going to be any good. Uh, here we go. There's this, oh my God. There's this bridge part. There's this rhythm in there. Oh my God. Here we go. This part, this is the part. Tool. That rhythm is such it's such a driving force. It it like it like shudders and stumbles, but it's very much on track. It's it's such a heavy moment, and he's still singing, but he's got oh <laughs> man, song of the day, which is a thing I don't do. That song is great. There is a there's a lot of good parts. It has some beautiful little quiet things, and it has some very heavy, um, heavy things. So yes, that's the song of the day. I think I'm going to end it with that. I've gone on for too long already. Uh, I I very much appreciate you hanging in there with me on these you guys are the best um please if there's anything you want me to talk about or anything i didn't talk enough about just let me know uh keep keep it going i, I love that you guys comment i really i can't thank you enough it makes me feel like it's worth it to do this and i hope you get something out of this if nothing else it gives me a creative outlet which i desperately need <laughs> i really do and uh yeah Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening, and I will hopefully catch you in the next one. May the force be with you. Goodbye. Goodbye.